So I want to do an example of two-dimensional kinematics. And that example is uh, written here. So a stone is thrown horizontally with speed v on an incline making an angle phi with the ground. How far down the incline does it go? So I want to, we want to look at some 2D kin kinematics, but, but also I want to do this to sort of highlight how you would approach a how you should approach a problem. There is no formula or, or a, a flowchart way that's going to help you solve any problem. But for kinematics, there's just a general uh, approach. And, and many authors of books will give you problem-solving strategies that are all kind of variations of the same theme. And they follow this, this sort of procedure. It starts with good visualization, being able to get a good picture in your mind, a good schematic of everything that's going on, and then sort of brainstorming, uh, trying to, what do you know, what do you not know, what are you trying to find, what sort of relationships can you come up with uh, through logic, given the conditions of the problem? What are the relationships that you can uh, bring between them using the appropriate physics? And once you have sort of enough relationships and data and information, you can proceed to the, the solving stage, which is the math and the algebra, and then finally some sort of check to make sure what, uh, what, you, what you have makes sense. And even here isn't something that's always linear. Often you'll go back and forth between brainstorm and visualization. You might think you have a method to solve and that doesn't work out and you have to go back. But, but that sort of gives you a, a, a general approach to look at it. And of course, to be able to do this, you need lots of space, lots of uh, scratch paper to do your work. So let's, let's take a look at uh, approaching this problem this way. So a stone is thrown horizontally. I'm on a, an incline. So, so let me get a picture of this incline here, and I'm going to try to get a pretty decent sized picture. That's fine. And so I have said this incline, and I know that uh, this incline makes an angle phi relative to the ground, so that's uh, phi. So I have a stone throw, I'm gonna, and I might have a picture of persons throwing a stone or something like that, but I'm going to go for, um, make this sort of a schematic. I'm going to assume the, the particle model, and I'm going to say my stone leaves directly from this point. It's thrown horizontally, so it starts this way, and it's going to fall, and then eventually reach some final point. And what I'm asked for is, is how far down the incline uh, does it go? And so I've, I'm going to look at that length. That's this length here. How far down the incline does that go? I'm going to, doesn't say what to call it. I'm going to call that L. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking, uh, looking to solve. One of the things I might notice right away, this is my, my point here that then this angle is also uh, phi, so that might be important as well. Okay, so here's my schematic. Now I need a, a coordinate system. And just for fun, I'm going to establish, I'm going to set my origin here. There's lots of places I could put my coordinate system, but I'm going to start my coordinate system where the uh, object starts. And I'm going to have this direction as my positive x. And to change things up a bit, I'm going to say this direction is my positive y. Okay, so what does this, uh, what sort of, I got a pretty good picture of what's going to happen. The, the rock is going to fall, it's going to come down here. I'm sort of established an origin and coordinate system. Um, it's going to... Uh, travel some distance x and some distance y before it before it falls for example it's going to travel some uh, distance x before it hits and um, and I know that X where it lands is going to be equal to L cosine Phi I also know that the uh, the y direction, and since it's positive, it's positive y, that it uh, travels is going to be L sine 
identify. So I can see already from my picture, I've, I've got some relationships between the what I'm trying to find, which is the, down the incline, versus the x and y uh, distance that it travels. Okay, so what do I know? And what physics can I apply to the problem? This is, you know, two-dimensional kinematics, so I'm going to use those relationships. I also can sort of identify uh, two points in time that I'm interested in, a TI and a T final. T initial, of course, is when it, when it uh, launches, and T final when it lands. I'm going to call my uh, T initial zero and my T final I, T. I don't know when that is. Okay, um, so let's look at what sort of kinematic information we know along the x-axis first and then the, the y-axis. So my x-axis, uh, x at initial, it starts, is equal to zero. x final, I don't know what that is, I call that x. My uh, initial x-velocity and that's given by v. It starts out with some, it's thrown at some speed v. Uh, the final x velocity, we don't know. We know the acceleration in the x direction, and that's uh, zero. And then the time is, is the same for both x and the y. Okay. So what information do we have about what's going on in the y axis? The initial y we know is zero. The uh, final y we don't know, call that y. The initial velocity in the y axis, we know that's zero. It was launched horizontally. And the, the final velocity in the y, we don't know. But we know the acceleration in the y. It has a magnitude g. And we'll check our coordinate system. In this case, y is pointing down. The acceleration is pointing down towards the center of the Earth. So given this coordinate system, the acceleration in the y dimension is g. All right, so let's, uh, these are sort of parameters we know. We're sort of in the brainstorming stage. We do have some handy kinematic equations that relate these parameters between two instances in time. So let's take a look at uh, some of that. Let's first look at the uh, x direction. See if we can establish relationships between these. Well, we know that um, the the final uh, position is equal to the initial plus initial velocity times t plus one half acceleration t squared, and this is pretty handy because the acceleration is zero, initial position is zero, so x, our final position, is equal to our initial velocity times t. So that's a, a handy equation. I might even give that a number, call that mm, equation number one. If we look in the y direction, we have, of course, the similar uh, relationship. Final is y initial plus the initial y velocity t plus one half uh, y acceleration t squared. And so here, this is zero and this is zero. And so we have our y is equal to one half g t squared, and it's positive because the a y is is positive. Okay. We also know from the uh, geometry of the of the the physical geometry of the system this triangle just like we, we extracted that information, we know that tangent of phi is equal to uh, y divided by x. And I mean, that's useful to, to get out now because, you know, phi is something we know, phi is something given, so it's good to establish relationships between our known quantities and our unknown quantities. Okay, so what I think we have, we sort of have um, uh, our equations here, and we can start to solve. We don't know t, so we can get rid of it. We can solve for t here in equation 1. t is equal to x over v. So by putting that into equation 2, into 2, we get y is equal to uh, g over 2 
x squared over v squared. And so we're given uh, v squared, so we know that, but we still don't know um, x and y. Okay. But given y, we can eliminate that by putting that into equation 3. So into 3, and we get tangent of phi is equal to, uh, well, 1 over x times y, which is g over 2 x squared over v squared. And so the, uh, we have a factor of x that cancels. And so we can solve for x using this expression. I'll do that down here. And so x is equal to 2v squared over g tangent of phi. And so now that we know x, we can uh, substitute into there, into our first expression, so this is equal to the length down, which is what we initially needed to know, times cosine of phi. And now we can solve for our final answer, our length is equal to 2v squared over g tangent phi over cosine phi. So does, does this make sense? Uh, we have v squared, which is going to be v squared over g, and so we can check units, meters squared over seconds squared, and that's acceleration, which is meters seconds squared. So meters, our units are correct. And as uh, phi goes to zero, this goes to one, this goes to zero, the whole thing goes to zero because now the entire thing uh, uh, sits on the ground. As v gets larger, the length that it goes is much larger, and so uh, looks like some of the our limiting cases work as well as our units as these things scale. That makes sense as well. So it's sort of our, our check to see whether or not our answer makes sense uh, works as well. So this is now is the length that the stone makes going down the incline.